Hello, hello, hello. Hello and good evening to everybody. <clears throat> Here we are, greetings all. Wow, 33 already in the room, amazing. How's everyone doing? Sunday night over here in the UK. It's just turned 9 p.m. And famous last words. <laughs> I hope this doesn't take too long. I actually was looking at how far we got in the last stream and we're actually about, I would say three fifths through um, the images that I took. So there's not a massive amount more for us to cover. Um, and also I think pretty much everything that's left now is just chemex because we covered all of the other kind of European stuff was as was as we were walking through the museum. So this is kind of like, yeah, I'm at the I'm at the end, I'm rushing. <laughs> I've still got some good pieces, but there might be a few plaque images missing. So there might be a few images where there's no description. But yeah, we've got a bit to cover and we had a really good live stream, um, the one that we did last week. We, for those of you who are joining for the first time, this is actually part two of a visit to the Louvre. And we do these streams, you know, I, 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 was, I would say regularly, they're not that regularly, as regular as I go to a new museum and take loads of images. Um, it was just something that you know, we we started doing on a whim. When I say we, I mean us on the channel. Started doing on a bit of a whim, and they seem to work quite well. They're quite nice to have these um, walkthroughs and to discuss the pieces and to see really what's there. So, yeah, this is our third of its kind. This is the the, the Louvre Muse Museum. Like, like I think I've said in the previous stream, we've already done the British Museum, the Berlin Museum. This is the Louvre. Um, I'm sure we'll do some more in the future. I talked about two more that I'm definitely going to do soon, which are the Peachy Museum and the Bowers Museum. They're both in the UK. They're both regu relatively small. So we'll do those soon. But yeah, yeah, this is it. This is this is part two. So hello, everybody who's online. Um, Meezy was first. <laughs> um, so I highlighted his comment. Um, Ifioma was second. Greetings. Hervey Dia, Zehoven, Talia, Sean John, all oh, that name's a bit. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. That prompt that could be your real name. So apologies. <laughs> sorry, you must be having a hard time at the moment. It's like woman named Karen. <laughs> I feel sorry for them all now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll give myself jokes. Sorry. Um, greetings, Sean, my brethren. Um, please don't hate me for that one. Um, Anthony Lamont, Retain Ascension, Talia, Carl Dojo. Macy Graham, M72, The Souls of Our Ancestors. Uh, I'm glad to see you laughing there, Sean. Yeah, greetings all. Thank you very much uh, for yeah joining me on the stream. And we're not going to waste too much time. I think we can basically, yeah, just kind of get straight into it. Um, Yeah, yeah, let's just dive straight in. Let's just dive straight in and get going. And hopefully we'll make for good time. If this ends up being like an hour and a half stream, I'll be really, really happy. Um, but any of you who've been on my streams before knowing that that's uh, that's normally famous last words on, on my part. So, um, yeah, don't hold your breath. It could be here. It could take a bit of time. <laughs> All right. Um, let's let's go. Let's start from where we left off. So like I mentioned before, I think we left off right over here. Brilliant. Here we are. So this is our this was our parting point last time we were looking at. I'm sure you guys remember, and if you don't, I'll just remind you, this is a statue of Yuya. And I mentioned about how happy I was to find this statue because he hasn't got that much artwork available. Um, and I thought I just had this kind of like small statuette. But now I've, because of this statue, alongside some of the other artwork that's available, um, I, I feel like I'm in a position now where I could do a relatively good Reconstruction. I kind of showed you a version one in the video, uh, also in the previous live stream. And not only him, we've also got another statue of Yuya, which is really great because it's really nicely consistent with the existing one. And I loved the way it really complemented the reconstruction that I did. Because if, if anything, it, it's 
yeah, if anything, it emphasized how accurate the reconstruction was, which was amazing because obviously I hadn't seen this before. And then all of a sudden I've got this new piece of artwork, which I didn't know existed. And just like what happens normally on this channel, if you're here, because we are, you know, we're honoring the artwork, um, there's consistency. So it does throw into question, doesn't it? Everything you know about Egyptology, because when you think about it, one of the last tenets and even people who are kind of on the um you know who have a african perspective on ancient kemet fall for this they fall for this uh, whole idea that the the artworks aren't realistic you know they're they're vanity projects by you know the pharaohs and oftentimes they'd claim statues that weren't their own and it doesn't look anything like them and and i think that's a whole load of excuse my french bollocks <laughs> to be totally honest with you i think the statues are incredibly consistent um if you are i don't know if you've seen today i posted a couple of uh, did a couple of posts on my youtube um page so those of you that know those community posts that kind of pop up with just images i did a couple of posts about the um ramesses my ramesses reconstruction and ramesses when he's old ramesses when he's young and you can just see the cons and how he looks like basically king mutesa the second the kabaka of uganda and the amazing thing about this was how consistent Ramesses is from image to image um, to the point where you could get someone who looks like him in life and then pull up any statue of Ramesses you like and it looks like this person if these statues and these artworks and these steles and these shabtis and these you know whatever else gilded masks whatever were all just vanity projects and they didn't look like the pharaohs and they were swapping them and putting their names on ones that didn't belong to them then they wouldn't <laughs> they'd look random and they rarely do and actually one of the things that i hope comes out of this live stream that we do today is some you're, you're you know we'll just have that reinforced because i saw a few more pieces actually i saw a few more pieces than i'd seen before um, and we can compare them against the reconstructions if there there are ones that you know that exist to compare them to, which would be really good. So welcome everyone. Hi Macy, censored. Um, Hit flicks. I've already said hi to Soul of Our Ancestors, Science and Inspiration. All right, cool. That's everyone shouted out now, so I'm, I'm happy to get going. So this is where we left off. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's let's kind of do that as we go along. So we'll, we can make that the theme. Um, as we're going through today just to kind of pull up a reconstruction have a little quick comparison nod agree if we think it matches if not then hey you know i've got some work to do it's not the end of the world but this is my current reconstruction of um tuya which you guys saw at the end of last live stream but there's no harm in just quickly pulling it up again since we have a different depiction of tuya and to see how nicely it kind of falls beside it if at all it does fall so let's have a look here um yeah boom this one is that loaded so one second i'm just gonna minimize that so i can pull it to the side i do need to find some really good kind of like image comparison software that does this all in one window i'm sure it exists you guys can recommend that for me actually if you can think of a, a nice little imaging software that just kind of does live collages that would be really nice that would be like a godsend for me um so anyway there's my reconstruction of tuya okay and there's the new statue that i hadn't seen before and bear in mind the chin's been chiseled away here but just look at everything from the shape of the face to the parting of the eyes to even the shape of the nose that's got kind of got that really nice sweep towards the bottom I mean the lips are exactly the same length and width you would be you wouldn't be you know ill advised to assume that I made this reconstruction on this statue but actually I hadn't seen this statue before so that's kind of what I was talking about okay um, let's move on so next image let me just minimize that we don't need that at the moment close that one and expand this so let's make up the next image so i decided actually one of the things i wanted to do is i decided to get them 
from side view as well. I don't know if I mentioned the fact that I do a lot of that. So when I know that something's going to contribute to maybe me improving or working on reconstructions, I like to get the side view so we can get the full you know feel of what this person's face was like and just look at the the forward sweep in nature those of you who are familiar with the channel you'll be familiar with things like you know the zygomatic projection that's the kind of like the upper cheekbone area the way the face sweeps forward that's a, this is a very african trait really really very african trait just look at the kind of forward sweep in nature of her face and actually what was really interesting is um I did the I did a little animation at the end of the short I did for Tuya which I feel like I want to pull up really quickly and the reason I want to pull up pull up quickly is when she turns her head to the side it's just AI generated by the way but AI does a really good job of capturing the depth of the face and when she turns her, her head to the side she has this exact same kind of lower face projection that I really love and it really just kind of like I, I, one second I'm, I'm gonna play it. yeah i'm just gonna i'm not gonna play the whole thing i'm gonna find the short and i'm gonna skip to the end where it's animated so that i can share that with you really quickly um boom, boom, boom. maybe let's pull up here and go to well there's king's monologue don't want to pull up the live stream right now but i'll get the channel here you go shorts and here it is so here it is This is Lady Thuya, wife of Yuya. Then they think that is We don't need to see the whole thing. I'm going to try and zoom out a bit. This is Lady Thuya, wife of Yuya, mother of Queen Taiye and grandmother of King Akan Aten. She is believed to be a direct descendant of Queen. I'm just going to skip forward because I don't want to watch the whole thing. Queen Ahmosa Nefertari. She held numerous considerable roles in the governance of Kemet during the 18th dynasty. This reconstruction consolidates. Sorry, it won't let me skip, so you'll have to just watch it. It's only a minute. The known depictions from her statuette and gilded mask, both likely carved during her youth. Watch until the end to see her brought to life. There. So that's what I wanted to get. Sorry, I did all that just to show you this little one still here. Oh, oh why would it do that? That's so annoying. These are literal pictures. Oh, that's so irritating. Sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go. But I'm not gonna play it again. I hope you guys saw it. <laughs> Just when she turned her head, all I wanted to share was that kind of that lower face projection. Yeah, that this statue has. She had that exact thing. And bear in mind, AI has kind of like guessed the, that the the three D nature of her face. I've done a two D reconstruction, obviously, but AI has guessed her projections from the way I've shaped her face from the front, and it's given her that exact kind of like sweeping nature at the bottom so when she turns her head you can just see it. and I thought that was great when I saw this statue I was like oh wow really really nailed that but um, anyway yeah I guess you have to yeah thanks Yatende Yatende saw there you go <laughs> maybe at the end play it again good shout maybe I will I'll, go, I'll play it again at the end I'm not playing again now that's that was just too disappointing let's move on so um, there's Yuya again if you had forgotten what he looked like um move forward and I got a side view it was quite far out but it's still good enough to kind of get an idea of his projections once again very tootsie looking I have to say are you yeah um and you'll see the reconstruction you can see my reflection there you'll see the reconstruction uh shortly of you yeah and Tuya together now moving on to this next one this wonderful sculpture that you're seeing on the screen someone actually mentioned this last week and they said Actually, real quick question, because you guys don't seem that far behind me. Um, who is this? So yeah, that's a really quick question. Who is this? I know a few people might recognize this statue. So I'm gonna ask who is this? And when I get the first guest, then I know that we're kind of running the same time. Hmm. Gives me a chance to sip my tea. <laughs> Yes, musicologist. I, I, you know what, musicologist. I feel like it might have been you. I could be wrong. It is Amenhotep the Third, and I feel like it could have been musicolog musicologist who was asking me where this statue was. Someone was asking me, and I feel like it might have been you, but I could be wrong. But someone was asking me where is this statue, and I was staying really quiet. 
but I'm going to explain now why I didn't show this statue last week. Um, because I showed you, if you remember correctly last week, I showed you a range of statues of Amenhotep the third. And the reason I showed you that range of statues in a cluster is because they were all placed in a cabinet. An Amenhotep the third cabinet, really prominently placed. This is Amenhotep the third's cabinet. Okay. So they had a, a big cabinet. Um, in fact, let me just quickly pull up one image to show you. I think I can just scroll back really quickly and then come back to this because it wasn't too far behind from where we were. There we go. There you go. So well, there we go. So this is the Am Amenhotep the third cabinet. Yeah, that one. That was, so this is it. So this is the image. You've got this head. You've got this head. You've got this head. There you go. Amenhotep the third. Big cabinet placed prominently. You can't miss it. It's got these wonderful pieces. But then tucked away to the side. You've got this statue, this amazing detailed statue of the same king, Amenhotep III. So why is it not in the cabinet is the question. It, it, that's the that's the kind of what I was coming to. This this statue, the reason it wasn't with the rest of them is because it was tucked away completely in a corner, really easy to walk past. This is, bear in mind, Amenhotep III is one of the greatest pharaohs in comedic history yeah him and, and t that literally is the greatest pairing my husband and wife pairing in comedic history without any shadow of a doubt queen t amenhotep the third that was you know golden age just everything went right for kemet under their rule they were he's called the magnificent so amenhotep the third's nickname is called the magnificent why would you tuck away one of the most detailed statues of him to the side I'm not once again I'm not calling out conspiracy theory here but I just think it didn't make logical sense to me and this is obviously Queen T that very consistent hair hairstyle that Queen T has on pretty much every single one of her statues um, apart from the bust the very famous bust she always has these thick kind of um, twists that go down into these very narrow twists just after the shoulder this is one of her most consistent statues you see it on the little statuette when she was lady t and she wasn't queen t you see it in her jade statue there are many many depictions of her with this exact um hairstyle and it's a real shame that her head has been knocked off here it's a crying shame but look at amenhotep the third's features here you know <laughs> look at his features here Macy, thank you very much for the donation. And you've asked a very nice question. Is is there a way you can share your photos? I am planning on doing so, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I, w I won't be really picky with these. I'll be happy to share these with pretty much any and everyone. But I am in the process at the moment of just, it's one of these projects that I've started and just, it's really, I'm finding really hard to find time. I've got, I've bought my website URL. I've actually got, wordpress installed and everything so all i need to do literally is put content on there and it shouldn't take this long it's just that i find every free moment i get i'm reading researching or producing videos so it's just a hard project to give my time to at the moment but when i do i intend for that to be the hub of getting everything out from reconstructions to transcribes of my videos to papers to images everything I intend to put out but um yeah that's that's uh, in, in the meantime i'm sure we can get something going in terms of sending them privately um i'll try and do a a, a job of making them more available because i think that's a very a very fair question to ask so anyway yeah so this wonderful statue of amenhotep the third i mean <laughs> look at those features and uh, once again i didn't know i did mention that i was going to try and do a little bit of comparison so i have done a a reconstruction of Amenhotep the third and really the, the the interesting thing is this that I didn't really use this statue for my reconstruction because um it didn't fit in with the other um the other images of him in that the the features were a bit too prominent and if I'd it was kind of either or so I, I used it a little bit in terms of a comparison source um, but at the same time, I also had to be muted in terms of how much I used it, because if I had used this as the number one, and this is the thing, and this is why I love what we do, you know, in this community and this circle, 
if this was the other way around and I was a Eurocentrist and you had a statue that had him with hyper Aryan features, you know, really long pointy nose and blue eyes, they that would be their absolute authority. They would be like, this is the true depiction of Amenhotep III. Look at that. That's exactly what they would do. Unfortunately for them, that doesn't exist. In fact, that doesn't exist on any pharaoh. There's no pharaoh with hyper Aryan features. However, we in the, what they want to say, Afrocentric, I'm just going to say the African focus community have this image clearly depicting what could only be a black man. There's just no way, shape or form this is depicting anything else but a very African black man, like almost caricature african black man here and we don't feel i didn't feel the need to use this i didn't feel the need to use it as lovely a portrait it is i felt like the other portraits in this collection did a good enough job at presenting me with what i saw as being a more holistic so i didn't have to use this that's the difference between us and them so i really want to make that clear if we wanted to do damage if we wanted to deal a death blow <laughs> to, to eurocentrism we just we just share this image like what do you do with that if you're a eurocentrist the ancient egyptians were black they were white and Arab. okay cool here amenhotep the third greatest greatest ever <laughs> comedic ruler what race is this statue yeah exactly <laughs> tumbleweed that's exactly what you'll get from them. They'll have nothing for your oh, world. Well, not this, this statue. What bee stings on the lips? What happened is the the, the invasion of the locusts. This was after Moses cursed the Israel. <laughs> this is after the Israelites cursed the Egyptians, and this is shown he had bee stings on his lips, and his skin was turned dark brown through the. Uh, shut up, mate. Seriously, yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay. Um, Anyway, I'm rambling a little bit. I want to show you my reconstruction of Amenhotep the Third, which most of you would have seen. But let me pull it up. Mm -mm -mm. Just to show you how magnanimous a people that we are, and we don't need to, you know, do the whole extreme thing. Okay, so this is my reconstruction of Amenhotep the Third. Let me just pull up this one. I love this one where he's wearing the Nemes. So there you go. There's our, there's our reconstruction of Amenhotep the third. Okay. And I love the fact, still consistent. I hope you all agree. Still consistent with this statue, but also consistent with all of his other statues. Because we aiming for that level of accuracy. So still consistent with this statue. I didn't have to make his lips quite that big, but still consistent with, let me just quickly scroll back very quickly. Still consistent with every single one of his depictions. Absolutely consistent. Every single one of Amenhotep's depictions, every single one of his depictions consistent with. Yeah? Every single one. So no need to stress ourselves by exaggerating. We prefer to make a portrait or reconstruction that actually matches his numerous portraits, okay? And that's the difference between us and the Eurocentric and the Arab-centric community who will put a nameless seated scribe front and center on their money, in all their museums, everywhere you go, but their actual kings and queens of ancient Egypt, the greatest king in Kemetic history, or at least one of them, the magnificent Amenhotep III, they don't even mention him. His image you will see nowhere. Wonder why that is. Why would they hide the 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 most prominent ruler in Kemetic history and put a nameless scribe who they don't even know who what family they come from, how long they've been in the country, what their job was other than being a scribe, they'll put them front and center. Do you understand the, the pathology that goes with that? Okay. Let me scroll forward. Let's keep rolling. 
So that was, yeah, that's my various portraits of, um, well, angles of Amenhotep III, looking unapologetically African. Really, really love this statue. Yeah, and I love the fact that I was able to get all those different angles and we do need to flood the net with these images. So yeah, you're, you're spot on, um, Macy. Yeah, absolutely spot on. We do need to flood the in internet with these images. So I love this stele as well because it's one of the few that we got really good preserved color. So much, I always say so much is made about these kind of like red, the red Egyptians, this, that and the other. And you know, we always, you know, emphasize the fact that the red is just faded chocolate brown, <laughs> to be totally honest with you. It's just faded reddish brown, okay? So you can see what's wonderful about this one in here. Let me just zoom in. You can see parts where it's fading and you're getting that blocky red that people are used to. But where we have preservation, that you can see on his face as well, that blocky red that everyone's used to. Oh, the red Egyptians, red Egyptians. Well, that is, does that look red to you? Does that part look red to you? No, it's clearly the preserved kind of primer layer the red seems to survive really well whereas the brown seems to not survive so well but look at occasions like this and the thing about it is they'll see this one's oh well, this one's darkened through time no no it hasn't <laughs> it hasn't darkened through time this is the preserved color of what the ancient egyptians would have looked like okay really really nice piece this actually we've got a did i get the plaque because obviously we can see osiris up here i'm trying to remember what dynasty this was let me just quickly see if i got the plaque for it yeah I did so i'm in hotel the first so this is the yeah this is the quite early on in the 18th dynasty i believe look at this wonderful little stele that I managed to get an image of. And look at, once again, we, we keep talking about the detail. You can see the locks or long twists that are in the female's hair. You can see the matching complexions. I'm sorry, let's just go back and see as well. Excuse me. Um, does anyone see yellow women anywhere? Just a quick question for the general public. Does anyone see yellow women? Because apparently all the women were always yellow and all the men were always red. Does anyone see any yellow women in this in this plaque? I'm in Hotep the fir first. Does anyone see any yellow women? I don't see any. I can see a very dark skinned black woman here. Yeah. And here. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any yellow women. So that whole ideology behind the women always being painted yellow is an absolute lie. Okay. It's an absolute lie. They've just taken what happened to be what was normally, in my view, from from my research a representation of how women like to paint themselves in gold when representing Hathor or Heteru or women when they were mourning were painted pale and they've taken that and they've applied that rule across all of Kemet when actually a majority of these steles and we could go on through so many you know tomb of Usa tomb of Hoi tomb of Horemheb, Tomb of Nebamun, so many of these, you know, key, you know, massive stele artworks, and you never see any depiction of women other than being painted exactly the same colour as the men. Okay. So yeah, all this. Oh yeah, women, women were yellow because they stayed out of the sun and they didn't tan. Yeah, well, what happened with these women? Were these working in? Were these women working in the field as well? all these rich royal men working in the field why were all these rich royal men picking cotton <laughs> someone someone make it make sense i don't understand it okay um but there you go let's move on so this is yeah these are all in the round kind of 18th dynasty This is another one that I'd saw on the net quite a lot. And I always wondered what it was and who it was. And yeah, I'm so happy to have this image now. Um, my own image of it, really beautiful. You can see the, you know what's nice? Let me, let me pull up another image alongside this one, just for comparison. Um, boop, 
Bum, 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 bum. Sip my tea while I'm searching. Just for a quick comparison, this image always reminded me really strongly, particularly the way the hair is exactly shaped on this one, really reminded me of this man from the Afar tribe. Always had a really strong resemblance, just this one in particular. Um, let me just quickly have these side by side. You can see this, just the shaping of the hair, almost identical. I mean, we have slightly flatter taper in here towards the back, but you know, unmistakable. This one has slightly um, more kind of layered with the twists. You can see they're slightly more layered. This one's more kind of like coiled one on top of the other, but nonetheless, the, the comparison is close enough, isn't it? Okay. It's, it, it's very, very clear. Once again, just that consistency of African culture. Once again, being carried, it's not very difficult to think about what this person would have looked like in real life. So I, yeah, I really just like that comparison. Let's see who this is. I mean, look at those features. Is anyone going to really argue <laughs> that this is an African? I mean, if they do, it's just like, you know, it's really funny. Going back to Amenhotep the third, one of the arguments that's made by um, the Eurocentrist community about Amenhotep the third, and and this is, I, I kid you not, this is the dead dead truth okay <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking one of the arguments that's made about him is that he's overweight he's never been depicted as overweight in any of his statues but they say he's overweight that's their <laughs> that's their <laughs> explanation for full food apparently a white person who you know eats too much food ends up having black features because that's basically what they're getting at he looked like that because he's overweight He's just an, an, an Arab who ate too much. <laughs> I swear to you, that is their argument. So if you ever have the time, I'm not going to do it now, but if you ever want to, just Google Amenhotep III and you'll notice when they do paintings and reconstructions of him, they always paint him and reconstruct him as a fat person. <laughs> Uh, you have to laugh sometimes the desperation oh it's just it's palpable anyway let's um have a look at look see who this is this is statue of prince iames amos that's no iames is not that doesn't sound like amos so this is uh Freya. that's brother brother something amosis ah oh, okay founder of the new okay of the new kingdom so this is the brother of Amos who was the founder of the new kingdom so this is Prince Iamos okay so there you go um, so this is the brother of Amos who founded the new kingdom and you can see well if we know that you know his brother looked like this yeah we only don't need to guess too too far in terms of what Amos himself looked like okay we can clearly see that the family has some, you know, yeah, I don't need to say too much more than that. Let's move on. And how about this one? This is another one that comes up um, quite regularly, um, or at least I've seen it a few times, but seeing it face to face was striking. Now, this is beautiful. Now, we know, first of all, this is a pharaoh because they're wearing Nemes and unlike Hollywood and all of these and not I say Hollywood but if you guys remember the um, picture of the painting or the video of the painting that I took on the ceiling of the Louvre they had you know all those Roman looking people wearing Egyptian garb and they had all of the soldiers as all of these stupid films do wearing the Nemes, even though only the pharaohs wore the Nemes. This wasn't general Egyptian heads. Head, you know, apparently Egyptians couldn't resist putting stuff on their head. You know, you got soldiers wearing wigs into battle. You've got <laughs> guards wearing the Nemes crown, flapping all about their shoulders. It's like, <laughs> you guys really just did a job on the public in terms of thinking that 
ancient Egypt was a real clown show. Unfortunately, it's not the case. This is a crown, okay? This is a pharaonic headdress. This is a king's or queen's headdress, okay? This is not something that you will find on the head of the general population. So we know this is a, a pharaoh. And yeah, just look at the face, look at the features, look at the deliberacy in terms of the way it's been presented in terms of its color, in terms of making the eyes really white, okay? So this isn't, this is preserved quite strongly the color of the eyes. The nose has been completely annihilated, but you can see where it ends, but you can't hide those lips. You cannot hide those lips. Those are, with all due respect, bigger than mine. Um, and I don't have small lips, so, you know. <laughs> I think everyone who's saying would see the same thing here. This pharaoh, once again, not seated scribe, okay? Not strutting random, random wooden statue from random middle, um, so intermediate period. No, this pharaoh, this ruler of Kemet is clearly a black African absolutely and clearly a black African let's have a look who they are so this says sorry my sketchy French it says at the end the Lafin is the end isn't it the end of the 11th dynasty and the start of the 12th dynasty so let's figure out who this is based on that so if we're talking about the end of the 11th going into the 12th that would make this Pharaoh, um, bear with me. Amenem hat, yeah, that would make this Pharaoh Amenem hat the first because the first Pharaoh of, of the 12th dynasty was Amenem hat the first, but he came, he was the vizier of Mentuhotep the fourth at the end of the 11th dynasty. So the only f person this could have been, based on that description, although it could be wrong, but based on that description, this is a depiction of Aminem had the first. So there you go. Rai Rilo, good guess of Mentehotep. That was one dynasty back, but you're almost spot on there. Yeah. So there you go. What a wonderful depiction we have there of Aminem had the first. I will use that when I'm making his reconstruction. And yeah let's just have a look at a few of these steles because it's lovely seeing them i mean one thing i loved i feel like this is this is all going to be um middle kingdom particularly 11th and 12th dynasty because i'm telling you during the 11th and 12th dynasty man oh man did we have a, a i would say we had a very different phenotype in the 11th 12th dynasty than what we got in the new kingdom so in the middle kingdom particularly 11th and 12th dynasty you really did have some quite strong prominent features and i've mentioned this before i always feel like the middle kingdom leaned towards kind of like more towards the central west african phenotype i'm not saying they were west africans because they were east africans because it's in east africa let's face it it's northeast africa so they're they're nile dwellers but they're certainly in terms of the phenotype it leans definitely towards um kind of like yeah let's just say greater africa um and this kind of feature set is really really common this is exactly what um the queens of mentuhotep look like um you know um ashayet kawit and kemsit they all had these features but even just the general i mean looking at looking at this all the general but they've made a very clear point of depicting how very strong their facial features are i'm actually relieved that this is in france and it isn't in egypt because nothing would have survived if this was in egypt so actually it's a relief if i'm going to be totally honest with you it's a relief that this isn't that this is in france as much as they like to obfuscate and there is a degree of protectionism that's come from the fact that this excuse me hasn't been left in the hands of Egyptian antiquities because they would have gotten rid of these traces, these very, very strong traces of phenotype. I'm sorry, I've gone back too far there. So let's move forward. These women, once again, very, very clearly African features. I mean, there has been an attempt here, but it's still, it's still preserved <laughs> more than enough for us to be able to make out their faces. So this is the 
stella as a whole you can see it's quite an immense piece really large here's another one wearing the crown of low so i'm gonna guess as well wearing the crown of lower kemet uh, this is gonna sound really random but they're the wearing the, the, this this crown the, the deshra of lower kemet did seem to have its m most prominence and most happened a lot in the middle kingdom for some reason there was a lot of well i'll say for some reason i'm sure we could find it quite easy but the the, the pharaohs the kings even though they would be ruling both upper and lower kemet liked to wear the crown of lower kemet perhaps as a statement it could have been a military statement because when you think about it, you're coming to the end of the first intermediary period and perhaps they're making a military statement by saying you know we're in charge of this territory now but you did find that it tended to be a um a trend of the middle kingdom pharaohs to wear just the crown of lower kemet and not the shent which was the the, the dual crown that showed both of them they like to wear just the single crown of lower kemet um and back obviously in the middle kingdom they didn't wear the kepresh yet they would just wear either this or the shent or the crown of upper egypt but they liked they had a preference for the crown of lower kemet for some reason once again i think it was a definitely a well i wouldn't say definitely i think it's possibly a kind of like a military statement that they like to make this is so that was Montuhotep or Mentuhotep that we just saw there I think taking offerings or something like that receiving offerings I think that's what it says Mentuhotep receiving offerings here and came across some of these striding statues I wonder why they haven't chosen this one as their favourite walking statue you know a bit bit too regional this guy looks a little bit <laughs> you know I think he's leaning far too much on the East African phenotype for them to use this one so they'll probably prefer to ignore it pretend it doesn't exist and it was a chance Chancellor Nakti 12th dynasty This one was a little bit corroded, as you can see. But still, wonderful representation. And once again, you can see that hairstyle there that we've just looked at. So I'm sure we're all familiar with what this represents. Okay. And this is governor of the province of Asiut, what's Asiut? I'm trying to think what that would be in in, in English. I'm not sure. And his name is Hapid, Hapid Jedfai. I've butchered that name, but they probably butchered it when they translated it. So there you go. <laughs> um, and this is Stele of Anketef that we're coming across now. Uh, or sculpture of Tahotep. Let's see which one it is. Okay, no, so this is a stele of, stele of wherever. So once again, is this 12th and 11th and 12th dynasty again? Yes, so this is this is Middle Kingdom, 2000 to 1900 again. And once again, like I said, those very, very unmistakable Middle Kingdom features being shown there. Can I give a big shout out to Pachyderm or Pachyderm, I don't want to murder that, um, <laughs> podcast show hosted by Brother D. May the ancestors continue to be pleased with your stellar research. I like that. Very, very good of, <laughs> very, very good use of, of words there. I can see you're definitely a podcast host. <laughs> Scholarship and pre preservation work. Peace and many continued blessings, family. Thank you very much, my brother. I appreciate the five dollar donation and i appreciate the support it's much much appreciated man yeah um let's carry on i'm just keeping an eye on the comments actually just as i in fact let me just have a quick quick breeze for the comments do bear with me i want to see if there's anything that i've missed out there's lots of people been talking which is good 
like I said, I do I do review the comments, but it tends to be after the live stream. Um, <laughs> the cut off the nose to spite his face. <laughs> yeah, we know where that saying comes from now, don't we? Um, yeah, okay, cool. Nothing major. Hoping. It's the origin of the civilization. Well, yeah, um, so Kemet 3.0 said the origins of civilizations trace back to West, South and East Africa consider exploring the out of Africa model, which emphasizes the Green Sahara in human migration patterns. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see anything. Yeah, that I would say is particularly um, incorrect about that statement. Um, I would say my current understanding leads me to believe that most African culture as a whole originated actually in that Sahara, that green Sahara region and then emanated from there. And that's one of the reasons why you have quite a large and contiguous African culture. But in saying that, I also believe that, I should say, I also believe that I don't believe that African people have ever been static. And I think this is one of the um, things that's used to really simplify history to fall into a western model is that people really have this idea that pe humans migrated in waves and then remained static for thousands of years and then wave of migration then static so it's like for people to get for people to populate let's say the first out of africa humans were all in africa then they moved out of africa and populated europe they did you know current historical setup suggests they did that all in one big movement and the moment they moved out no one ever moved again everyone just stayed where they were for several thousands of years that's not how history works that's not how people work people are constantly moving constantly migration migrating so what you'll find is that everything happens in consistent series of movements okay movements to and fro ebbing and flowing you know people are like water if water stays stagnant it, you know it goes it pep you know it goes putrid however if it flows you know it continues to you know be be usable for want of a better word and that's exactly how people work and that's exactly how i believe it was on the african continent you know we already know we have that kind of evidence of for instance the ancient egyptians venerating the west african crocodile in particular you know the crocodilia sucus which is you know the which is the one that you find in the temples of sobek and komombo and these various places you know th there's clear evidence of consistent movements sinistret the third um of the 12th dynasty 12th dynasty yes 12th dynasty um conquered right the way to um senegal <laughs> so he conquered that entire saharan strip and kemetic culture passed through all of that N niger saharan um region all the all up that niger river you know right through the sahel the sahel region kemetic culture would have been found throughout there and it just ebbed and flowed and you had this consistent movement so this idea that you have this kind of like these very narrow small mono-ethnic bordered people is is not realistic whatsoever and that's one of the things that we kind of have to dispel there's just constant flowing and i think that's one of the things that we that once we understand that it becomes much easier to understand that the relationship that exists between many african ethnicities um can date back centuries millennia you know even longer depending on you know when you know people have moved in and out of certain parts of the region so yeah it's just that's kind of one of the things that i try to share yeah so there you go let's uh let's move on this one I hope you can see what's going on here okay and um, this is very typical in fact this image i thought was just plain to put it plain and simple 
really excellent. And I hope you can see why I thought it was really excellent. Okay, this is typical of what you get in Egypt and amongst Kemetic artworks. Okay, what you normally get is this color. But they make sure that they rub down normally the entire statue or sandblast it as someone's mentioned before but they'll make sure they rub down the entire thing so there's no trace of this dark brown fortunately with this one we only have a partial kind of decaying now this i'm not i'm not suggesting that this one has been rubbed down this could be a natural decaying i'm not gonna argue that this one's been rubbed down because at the end of the day we do have the preservation of the true tone and once again this supports what we talk about on this channel so much there has been a massive over emphasis of red oh who were these red egyptians who were these red egyptians i'll tell you who the red egyptians were they were these black egyptians that's who they were okay this is the color you guys can see this is a very very deep dark brown yeah this is the preserved color without a shadow of a doubt you can see it there the the blockiness the darkness of it this was the target color you can see that without any shadow of a doubt but where it's been rubbed away okay we're left with this pinkish color sometimes red sometimes some other tone but either which way you we know what the target color is here the target color is these were just africans depicting themselves in a realistic manner everything from the facial features which have been tampered here as you hope you can guys can see but still look african regardless their hairstyle i mean well just on a quick note have you noticed they never explain this hairstyle this is one of the most simple hairstyles for any african worth their weight in salt what do we call this they'll be like yeah that's a shape up mate <laughs> yeah it's just the shaped short shaped afro okay there's no other hair on the planet that can present this way to a eurocentrist now you have to explain this by using some kind of helmet <laughs> theory oh well what it was is they they used to glue their hair down using a compound of resins in order to create a smooth surface it was then layered with bitumen which is tarmac for those of you who are lay speakers and um, <laughs> it, it's just the shape up mate yeah this we do this with our hair all the time okay how do we do it we just cut it low yeah that's it african hair cut low looks like this european hair or arab hair cut low does not look like this so i'm, I'm really sorry to disappoint you if you don't have african hair you don't qualify for this hairstyle yeah very simple big shout out to black rampage 2 about their favorite seated nameless scribe do you think he's legit or fake his hair still braided twisted locked all of which are not eurasian hairstyles salute to the scholarship i do think it's genuine i think it's been tampered heavily if we're talking about the same one um yeah i do think it's genuine there is evidence that even the seated scribe has some of this dark brown tint remaining and if it was fake they wouldn't have bothered with the dark brown, dark brown. they would have just done a rahotep and painted in pink <laughs> rahotep is a fake rahotep is pink all over but the seated scribe has some preservation of original tone so i think they just picked it and they tampered it and they you know you know they had their way with it similar to what they did with nefertiti but I think that's a really good question. And thank you, by the way. Let me not be rude. Thank you for the $10 donation. I really, really appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, so let's uh, carry on. Let's, let's actually, now let's answer this question here. So, because this is a, the type of question you get from, and I'm not suggesting you are, Vizian, although I'm sure you'll show who you are in the next few comments that you make. I have a question. If ancient Egypt was built by West, South and East Africans, why didn't they build it over there? Why out of all places the Nile? Well, that's a really... Uh, okay, I'm going to try not to be rude to you. Okay? First of all, why out of all places the Nile? Oh, well, the Nile is just the longest river. <laughs> yeah. 
one of the longest rivers in the world yeah one of the most the the most fertile banks on in the world yeah situated in one of the most strategic locations for africa for trade for access to global river systems for the rest of africa the nile would be the perfect place to situate your civilization yeah the perfect place this is why the nile got a although i do believe excavation of the sahara is going to reveal monumental amounts of um um artifacts although it hasn't really begun i do believe that's going to be the case but regardless of that the nile would be absolutely the perfect place the nile to this day remains one of africa's greatest sources of everything because of w what a powerful river system it is so that's a that's a peculiar question first of all because you're acting like the nile is is a strange place for them to have built these things when actually it's the perfect place it's actually a logical place where any human group would have chosen to do these things in addition to that we talked about earlier the fact that the Nile Valley civilizations were based on a conglomeration of Saharan slash Sahelian Africans and Nilotic Africans essentially so basically people from Central North East Africa all basically and West Africa obviously because we're talking about the Saharan region as well all basically bringing their knowledge together from previous civilizations as well and there's lots of evidence to suggest that previous civilizations existed bringing their knowledge and their ingenuity together and building something great okay um the question doesn't make any sense you know <laughs> they chose a certain place just like any other civilization will choose a location have you asked the question well why did the greeks choose to build their civilization in the mediterranean why didn't they build it in scandinavia do you realize how stupid that question is and I'm, I'm not i'm not trying to like be harsh on you but at the same time ask better questions it's a really really stupid question okay you you pick the place that has the you know the the most benefits for you as a civilization and the nile up until very very recent times actually has remained the most fertile the most logical place to sustain a civilization probably in the world so that answers your question i hope and i hope you're not a closet troll because i will block you moving on another really wonderful piece there now here we do have what appears to be okay a yellowish woman okay we do have what appears to be a yellowish woman this is one of the reasons why i captured this because i wanted to show we got a very very deep brown person a deep brown man and then we have a kind of yeah very bright yellow now this is clearly gold so she's clearly golden this isn't definitely not a patrol well, i'm this is opinionated and people will say you're being biased but i'm observing this and saying this looks like a depiction of gold doesn't look like any deliberate attempt to portray a skin tone okay that's how i'm interpreting this now i could be whoops sorry i could be incorrect in that assumption but what leads me towards this assumption is that this crowd or this throne has golden legs okay so he's sitting on a golden chair similar to king tut's one some kind of a golden chair here and the color seems to match so that's where i'm kind of leading to that assumption that this person is gold now beyond that i don't have that much okay that's that's all i can argue there but this is definitely an occasion where we have this woman or the woman definitely portrayed in some kind of a yellowish tone so this is this is an occasion where we have that It'll be interesting to actually read the plaque. Did I take an image of the plaque? And we have the same here. So we do have that trend on this particular one. There seems to be some presentation of offering to this, I want to say noble, for want of a better word. 
I would love to know what's going on here because it might give context as to why these women are portrayed yellow. But I did want to capture that image. Kind of, oh, once again, we've got a plaque there. It says here, Stele, the family sculpture, Horam hat, 12th dynasty, Middle Kingdom. So that's all it says. 12th dynasty, Middle Kingdom, Horam hat. I don't know. Any feedback on that would be very, very welcome. But that is one occasion. I, I obviously, you know, I'm not buying the <laughs> they stayed inside because that's clearly not the case here. It looks like a depiction of gold to me, but I would like to know why the women are being depicted in gold. It would be good to have a good understanding of that. I mean, I'm looking at it, just making sure that this hasn't been kind of like after coloured because we know what these sneaky, <laughs> we know what these sneaky people are like. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm maybe it's a possibility. I mean, looking at it, it is a possibility. <laughs> it is a possibility that this skin could have been after coloured. I don't know. But I'm. That's a. That's a false accusation unless I have some evidence to back it. So I won't. I'm just gonna kind of like put that out there so there you go there's a there's a depiction of yellow women all right there what does that say there stele of bow 12th dynasty i do love the middle kingdom so much i have to say wildflower has said some black people look yellow yeah and that's absolutely correct you know this could be a depiction of a tawny complexion when the top coat was on they could have just been women with yellow undertones. But I don't know, it's giving me really gold vibes here. I'm getting gold vibes. I could be incorrect. And I think... I guess my, my head is leaning towards the fact that if it was a depiction of... Um, the fact that some people have yellow undertones, then it would be good to see at least one man in the same yellow to support that argument because this would suggest that all of the women in this particular kind of family have a yellow undertone and all the men have a red undertone which I'd find normally got some kind of flip-flopping taking place so yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure but yeah here's what it is um there's some yeah yellow women it could be another shade of brown absolutely we don't know because we don't have the top coat in this occasion so I'm gonna just leave that there Let's have a look at some of these really really wonderful statues here i just i just, I, just I think i was running out of time and battery power so i just kind of started capturing them in groups here but you can see these statuettes really beautiful statues quite a number of them there and i think i've got the plaques yeah so i've got the plaques here so this is 13th dynasty 12th dynasty 13th dynasty 12th dynasty middle kingdom sometime and this oh this last one is Sunusret so this one over here is a depiction of Sunusret I think Um, Sat Hathor. Here's some more, anyway, of those images. Just captured a few in a but on a bundle. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, my PC literally just crashed. <laughs> Hasn't done that for a little while. We had a good a good streak of no crashes, and yeah, my PC literally just went blank. <laughs> I thought my um. I thought my um, mouse had run out of battery power, but it turned out it was just, it just completely died. But I think I'm live again now. Yeah, I can see my screen. Sorry about that. Let me know that you're here still, guys. Apologies. That was really annoying. Um, yes. <laughs> Who's running for a snack <laughs> back in time? <laughs> Yeah, I guess we should we should we should start building in these breaks, shouldn't we? Um, let me just get my windows open again. Sorry about that. I literally just completely died. Had to restart everything. 
so yeah that was great thank you guys for being patient we can continue where we left off once I find the image I'm glad I generated some some conversation around the yellow women because um, I think it's a good one it's a good one to have I've, I've, I've pondered the undertone thing I've pondered the maybe a different mixing compound which left the yellow yellow stain behind I've pondered the use of gold um, and my honest answer is I still haven't settled on what I think it's depicting <laughs> I really haven't um, I think the answer will lie in really being able to understand and read Medunetta which is why I'm dedicating so much time to that at the moment because I think that's the only way we're going to yield answers if we start making our own interpretations of the stuff that we read um, yellow signifying holiness RJ McKenzie just said absolutely uh, gold, yellow, or light brown, they all have black phenotype benefit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, no one's arguing here. Look, just to be clear, no one's here is debating about whether or not these women are Africans. They absolutely are, yeah? Absolutely are black women, yeah? There's, there's no two ways about it. Like, we saw throughout all of the images we're looking at, these are definitely black women. But the question is, why the, why the depiction of yellow? Is it a undertone, you know, of a a kind of a yellowy brown that existed first of all is it the gold um related to heteru or hathor is it something else it would be it would be nice to know is the is, is basically the point i'm making it'll be really nice to know but yeah um yeah i was glad i was able to share that with you guys let me jump back in i think you can see the image that's on the screen i think this is roughly where we left off is this right yes i want to say this is right yeah so we were here yeah, and I zoomed in here and I said the images wasn't great. So, um, let's carry on. Ah, so this really, really beautiful image. I love this. I love the depiction of this hairstyle that we see so often in Kemet. Because this actually, one of the only ways you can achieve this hairstyle and have this level of kind of body and actually have this really signature curl at the bottom I saw a woman with this exact hairstyle the other day when I went to the post office. She had sister locks um, and I'm slightly obsessed with sister locks now because I think that they are the base of probably about 90% of the female hairstyles in Kemet start with sister locks. And what you find um, women who have sister locks do sometimes as a kind of like I don't know if you call them what they call it like keeping styles or preserve styles I can't remember what they're called when you kind of do hairstyles just to kind of like preserve you know the nature of your hair and the growth is that they'll they'll put them into giant plaits so they'll wear two giant plaits and I was at the I wish I got a picture of her I did ask her actually I did ask her she said she was going to send me a picture and she just aired me out which is really annoying but there was a woman <laughs> at the post office and she had her hair she had really beautiful sister locks and she had her hair in two um, giant plaits and they looked exactly like this and they even curled up at the end like this just naturally just curled up at the end like this and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> you look like an ancient Egyptian fully as a man I was like you look like an ancient Egyptian please let me get your image I need to share this with my community people need to see this um yeah and she was like oh no it's fine I'm blah 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 I've got Instagram I'll follow you what's your name blah, 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 blah. and she showed me I'll follow you yeah yeah I'll send you some stuff today and yeah I didn't hear from her again which is a shame <laughs> but yeah it was just two really large braids made up of those kind of like thin locks and they look exactly like this and it was just once again one uh, just another kind of like tick in the box for stuff that Africans only Africans or people of African descent black people can do with their hair that other people just can't do yeah so there you go so I'm skipping through these quite fast this is two really nice images once again African hairstyle shape up this one's got really really short twists nice to see a really short variation there they didn't always have like the super long ones Actually, this the, the hairstyle on this one is really similar to how um, Queen Ashayet wore her hair. 
So if you have a look at was it Ashe or was it Kawit? I think it was Ashe yet. I want to Google that now. But one of them wore there. One of the the queens of a mental hotel wore her hair in these really short layered twists, but they were really really short, almost to the scalp. Really beautiful kind of like female African hairstyle. Very feminine. Really nice. These are just a couple of artifacts that I'd never come across before that I thought were really beautiful and I captured them. These ones had a really abstract feel, but I mean, particularly this one. This one gives me, obviously, it's got that kind of like a far, no, I want to say Aromo, this kind of Aromo Afro. If you look at the, if you Google the Aroma tribe, they have this. In fact, let's just have a look at that now because it's a really nice comparison to make. Um, good. What is going on there? Naughty. Um, I just want to show this really quickly just for comparison. Here we go. So it's this kind of very uniquely shaped. Just for comparison, it's kind of very uniquely shaped afro. So it's quite deliberately kind of grown out at the sides. And you see this with the Kemetic infantry as well. And he's wearing that same hairstyle. So it's not a perfectly round afro, but that's deliberate. It's deliberately, you know continuing this trend you can see this trend continued amongst the aromo you can see it here and a lot of the men have that there that's another really good example so you can see there's no denying there what we're seeing once again that consistency okay that very clear consistency between what africans are doing today and what they did back then yes yeah, it's, it's unmistakable no mystery. There's no mystery. No one in no one in the African community is confused about what's going on in ancient Egyptian sculptures in terms of what they were portraying. So these ones are all quite nice, quite unique pieces. Haven't seen before. This is a really nice um depiction of the loin the kind of ancient Egyptian or the Kemetic loincloth that it's really nice. Really nice. See I'm I'm with Yutunde there. Gotta put that comment actually I can't put the comment on the screen. I gotta quickly do some gotta do some housekeeping one second, bear with me. And then I can put the comments on the screen. Okay, so it should work. Um, boom. Okay. She said, I started to believe that Egypt was full of different African tribes like many other countries. I'm almost certain of that. And I stress this point so much. The Sepats in ancient Kemet, also known as the Gnomes, were not just kind of like districts. It's kind of like, you know, they, they give them names that you have to remember when you, you, we've been dealing with people who have been dealing with ancient Egyptian history are Europeans. OK, they they are the essentially the custodians of our interpretation of ancient Kemetic history. Europeans by nature and by default are mono ethnic. I can't stress this enough. They don't have diversity. Their diversity is their nationality that's it because they all come from a similar source one source of kind of like that visigothic vandal background they all come from that background and that's not a disrespect but their their all of their diversity comes from their nationality i'm french i'm german i'm you know dutch whatever and that's where their diversity comes from 
beyond nationality they don't have any diversity there's no ethnic diversity there's no linguistic diversity there's nothing they're just kind of like the same people in different geographic locations within a same nation and they've interpreted Egyptian or Kemetic history through their lens and we as Africans must understand that ancient Kemet reflected African culture in that sense if you go to Ethiopia you will encounter scores of ethnicities speaking scores of languages if you go to Nigeria you will encounter hundreds of ethnicities speaking hundreds of languages you will go from not even state to state but from village to village and encounter completely different ethnicities codes practices rituals religions everything across the board literally as you go from village to village and the attempt to really simplify ancient Kemet into a mono ethnic mono linguistic I'm going to stress that as well mono linguistic nation looking for this kind of like what what was the true ancient Egyptian language there was no true ancient Egyptian language that's one thing that people need to get their heads around if you're looking for a single language there was one script yeah there was one script just like we have one script in China okay but in China we have two major language groups and I think there are more beneath that but you have two major language groups that both read the same script but they're two almost entirely different languages and that people from one group cannot understand people from the other group unless they've bothered to learn the language completely different languages really different languages in terms of the way they're structured but they can read the same script and that's what you had in ancient Kemet I believe that the hieroglyphic language or Medu Neta was a written lingua franca something that everybody could understand but they had different tongues being spoken and different religions and different ethnic groups different practices I always stress the fact that Pliny the Elder said when he went to Dendera the Denderan people so this this is a gnome or a sepat in ancient Egypt he said the Denderans were pygmies that's what Pliny the Elder said he said they were short statured people they were pyg pygmies who would jump on the backs of the crocodiles and control them blah 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 but that, that's what that's how he described this entire district of Dendera pygmies now we know that ancient Kemet or Egypt was not filled with pygmy people but here we have one sepat that's being described as being entirely housed by pygmies so what you're talking about is you're talking about a very complex multi-ethnic state with different rituals different gods different whatever you want to call them being practiced throughout and what the one of the biggest disservices we can do in my view is try to force mono ethnicity monoculture even mono linguistics on this incredibly complex um kind of like yeah this incredibly complex state for want of a better word it was very significant that you had different um monarchies or yeah dynasties that ruled from different sepats okay the, th the way the Theban dynasty rule would have been completely different to how the Sayite di Say dynasty ruled or a Tanite dynasty ruled or a Memphite dynasty ruled you would have had complete contrast to their preferences to their what they upheld to the things that they backed financially to their foreign policies they would have contrasted based on where they were from so it's just yeah that, that's I just wanted to kind of really just touch on that because I think it's really important let's carry on oh what the heck is that no thanks so look I mean just bearing in mind what I just said is it deliberate that we have these short statured Kemetic people being shown based on what I just said because often you know we can just glance past a lot of these images 
showing tall people, short people, but perhaps there's something that's being communicated here to us. You know? Um, just to give a kind of real life example, Rwanda, you have the Tutsi, you have the um, Hutu, and you have the Twa. Yeah? Three groups that have kind of formed in Rwanda, but the Twa are without a doubt still classified as a pygmy people or short statured people. The Hutu are medium statured and the Tutsi are, or at least were, incredibly tall. <laughs> so you have, you know, and it's the same thing in Sudan. Okay, you have the, I, th I think it's the Dinka who are incredibly tall. I can't remember, someone might correct me, but the tallest people, I think on the planet, <laughs> Um, in Sudan okay they are of a different ethnic stock to some of the surrounding people so it's really important that we just kind of understand that these um, thanks RJ McKenzie so it's a dinka that at all yeah that we understand that these same nuances these same traits these same things existed okay these same things existed in ancient Kemet and perhaps they're depicting that to us as well so if we once we understand that we can start to appreciate these different these perhaps deliberate differences in sizes being shown they're all comedic but they're different types of comedic people just amazing some of these statues this is frag fragment statue of a man That's all it says. Statue of Sir. I believe this statue here I put in a video recently. Um, my blue one, I think it's at the start. <laughs> so that's quite nice to see that. Fighting of Dynasty. Um, province of Abydos. That's another Sipat. Or Abdu is the native name for that. I remember that from... Uh, do my work and who who recognizes this face it's fairly chiseled away but i want to see if anyone a big a quick clue is i've done a reconstruction of this one and i'm going to pull up the reconstruction and see if you guys can guess who it is whilst i'm pulling up the reconstruction Oh, that was a good guess, Joe Sar. Hit flicks. It's not right, but it was a good guess. And I'd say there is a similarity. Sinusret, yeah, boom. Noafo, you got it. So Noafo got it correctly. It's Sinusret the third to be correct. I'm just gonna pull up his reconstruction so we can look at it alongside. I never know whether to call him Sinusret or Sinwasret, but I guess it, it, it depends on how you translate the w slash u glyph um here we go i'm in the wrong place okay so here is I'm going to show you the one with the... Oh, that's interesting. I just realised I haven't done a version of him wearing the Nemas, which would be quite nice to do a comparison next to this one, so I'll have to show you this one instead. Uh, why is that so big? It'd be annoying. Try again. Sorry about this, guys. Let me shrink this down oh my gosh this is being so annoying I swear if anyone could find me a nice collaging software I will be so grateful because this is painful to do there okay so there's my reconstruction and I just wanted to kind of just show you that alongside yeah just wanted to show you alongside okay bear in mind I didn't use this once again just talking about the consistency I wish I could overlay these two so you could see. Actually, one thing that um, did sp um, jump out to me about this um, one is that the lips were actually thicker and I hadn't seen 
one with Sinistret's mouth being this wide. Everything else I was really happy with in terms of the shape of the face. He has got that quiet, almost flat, sunken face to some degree. Just, he's got these really distinct features, got those bulgy eyes. Everything else I was really like, oh, that looks exactly like my reconstruction. So I'm happy with that. But the lips were a bit of a revelation because if you can even just see how wide they are and they look like they're a bit, well, I mean, the bottom lip looks almost the same. The top lip looks quite a bit thicker. So, yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, I hadn't seen this one before, but once again, we just love the fact that we can be consistent. There you go, this one's slightly more face on now. Hope you guys can agree that that looks very similar. Once again, not saying this to toot my own horn. I'm saying this to toot the horn of the comedic artists who never got it wrong, okay? And to disprove the lie that this was all random and guesswork because it wasn't it never was that's why they're consistent there's another fragment of him in the back here you can see this one okay two different artifacts of sinister at the first both consistent with the reconstruction i hope you would agree yeah hope we can agree that these are entirely consistent with the reconstruction Right, and that's what happens when, <laughs> once again, you just honour the the artistry and you don't make these ridiculous excuses that Eurocentrists make because we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Okay. Um, now this is a young Sinisret the third. Once again, face has been slightly chiselled away, but I'm going to pull up one of my. I do have a younger kind of generations. These were done using AI, but I'd love to pull up one of the younger ones just so you can have that as a side by side comparison. Um, well, the young one actually is actually really young, so this might not be as a uh, as exciting to do, but let's do it anyway. So this is the. So I'm just resizing it so it doesn't do the same thing it did just a minute ago come out all big on the screen really annoying okay all right so we'll zoom in there so this is a younger one just based on the older face kind of like re-aged this is a bit older you can see this is kind of more towards this is more like 20s it looks like this is a bit younger but there's still some parts of the kind of reconstruction that carry along and you can see in terms of the shape of the face the size of the face there are some elements that where you can see yeah this is kind of on its way to looking like this when he's when he's older okay someone said drag the whole window to one side and you can get them even and resize automatically don't even know what that means. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, I need it half and half. You're gonna have to um break that down into about seven steps for me, um, Hatma, and I might and I might just understand what you've written. <laughs> anyway, let me move on. Um so yeah, that's Sinister at the third juvenile or as a as a child or younger, I should say. Um another Stelle once again look at that I mean this is Osiris but bl blimey look at look at the facial features on this I'm not even sure what dynasty this is okay so this is Osiris and someone obviously given some kind of an offering it looks like yeah um Asia Miners asked will I ever talk about Mauritania it's not my short list I'm afraid afraid it's not in my short list um i'm sure i'll get there eventually but at the moment i know too little um i guess i'll, co I'll cover some of it when we're talking about the moors but i'm very early in my journey in that regard i think the closest thing i've got to having information about mauritania is the books i've got on kind of moorish history which touches on it a bit so we'll see thank you for bringing that up by the way though Mm. 
this is a really nice piece just once again just to give you a little glimpse of the preservation of the original color okay even though it's been blasted clean and god knows there'll probably be some tampering that's gone along with that in terms of features you can see down here preservation of very deep and dark brown very deep dark brown okay you can see it inside the nose as well okay very very deliberate it would be wonderful and i think that's something that i do need to do would be to take these and to recolor these wouldn't it it would be nice so this is Amenhotep the second oh wow so this is Amenhotep the second I do need to bear that in mind that I've got this image when I go to do this reconstruction amazing or is this Amenhotep the second see I've confused myself now <laughs> that actually actually that this might be I don't think this one is I think this one's Amenhotep the second look at this I love this image that is a really, really beautiful image. And look at the preservation of the colour. Very rich, deep copper. Remember, we were doing these, um, if you saw my posts recently on YouTube, we are talking about kind of which colours people had and the fact that these people, before race existed, people were a lot more descriptive, even in literature. But I believe the ancient Egyptians were as well. But even in literature, people were a lot more descriptive about how people looked. And bear in mind, these aren't racist. So a lot of people misinterpreted that post and thought I was kind of like suggesting, you know, oh, you know, before race existed, everyone was still classified by colours. And I know you totally missed it. People used these words to describe how people looked, but that wasn't their race. So, for instance, those of us who are from an African family will know unequivocally I'm I'm a dark skinned, OK, swarthy African. Yeah, I have. A. Um, older brother who is copper toned, OK, another older brother who is swarthy like me, a younger sister who is somewhere between Swarvi and Tawny. You understand? We understand that within our families, all of these color tones can be represented. So it's clearly not a racial thing if <laughs> people in the same family can be described using different descriptors. And they did this throughout history. You know, you could have, you know, obviously amongst the, you know, black nobility, for instance, that were born, you could have a, a, a queen or a king who was described as swarthy but then they had a a child that was very black and uh, another a son that was tawny uh, this is so uh, i just wanted to introduce the descriptions so that people were aware that prior to race and actually here's another thing that was really important that i touched on and i'm not sure if this went over people's heads it wasn't a post to just show black diversity Although, obviously, that was a part of it. But that wasn't the aim. The aim was to let people understand that these were just descriptions of complexion before race. Actually, you could be described the same way as someone who's of a completely different race. So, for instance, if you're light-skinned, yeah, you might be described as tawny. And guess who else was described as tawny? People who are of that kind of Arabic complexion. And guess who else would be described as tawny? People who are Hispanic. <laughs> so you, as a tawny person, tawny didn't mean light skin black. It just meant your tone is yellowish. And you might be described alongside a whole bunch of other people who are yellowish. Yeah, and you have to bear that in mind. Just like even me as a swarthy person, I could be described in the same, you know, I could say, oh yeah, he's really swarthy. And then a, a Sri Lanka could walk in and be like, he's really swarthy because they're not looking to classify you as a race it's simply a description of skin tone so that was one of the reasons that one of the things that i had to kind of really i wanted to communicate and kind of push the fact that these are just descriptions of skin tone okay you need more than just a description of skin tone to really have an understanding of what someone was but yeah that's that 
hope you hope you enjoyed that post but once again going back I've, I've, I've gone off on one a tangent there what a beautiful image here what a beautiful image this is I can't wait to do this reconstruction hmm is this the same person is this a cabinet so I oh know that's the footmost the fourth that's interesting because footmost the fourth is the one that looks I think a lot like Kat Shepsut which I find really confusing. I'm going to have to figure out my, um, there's a, I've got a Footmosis the Four Hapshepsut Theory that I'm going to see if it plays out. Yeah, this one I haven't seen before. That's interesting. And then that was Amenhotep the, the second on that statue. This one's another really nice statue. It's a real shame that the nose has been destroyed in this, but you can just see, got wearing a crown of, the Hejet, the crown of Upper Egypt there, or Upper Kemet. Just captured this from side view, what a beautiful crown, beautiful statue. And that is Thutmosis the Third. Okay, so that's Thutmosis the Third. Or Thutmose the Third, I should say. Thutmose. So it says, one second, something of Hatshepsut on okay I don't I wish I could read French I've got some French people in there reading that out no idea what that says oh dear let's carry on okay so this I'm looking feature wise and I'm seeing Hapshepsut once again so because I think this is Hapshepsut I'm guessing this is going to be Footmosis the fourth but can you guys see what I think I don't, I'm not sure who this is by the way but that is looking like Hapshepsut's face there so yeah there you go look see this is what I mean there Footmosis the fourth so <laughs> you see uh, this is I got yeah so I always get them confused so I'm, I, it's got to the point where I'm thinking like well why am I always getting why do they look like the same person there has to be something in that these depictions of Footmosis the fourth and Hatshepsut so look identical literally identical yeah I'll, I'll figure that out when I get there I'm sure I'll do her reconstruction soon enough and then we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there Yeah, but that's like textbook Hapshepsut features there. Really confusing. Once again, look at this beautiful African hairstyle here. That is some kind of crimped sister locks at its finest. Look at the body of that. Look at the body there. Absolutely outstanding. So this is... Imenact, Imenact, something cadet de la real soldier and family, something like that maybe. I think cadet means soldier, doesn't it? Another really beautiful statue here. So this is a bust of, I don't know what that says. Dip, dip, I'm not sure what that says. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> don't know. Now this one's a really nice bust, beautiful. I mean, look at the, look at the fullness of the lips and features, but they've done that annoying thing here. And by the way, we're about to go into another era of tampering here. And that annoying thing where they've tried to be smart about adding color okay to around the eyes eyeballs eyelashes and leaving the clearly sandblasted or cleaned limestone i'm assuming this is limestone to make it look like this was some kind of target skin color it's like it's absolutely ridiculous there's no evidence in comedic history of them ever having white or 
this pale color as a target color. So it's really annoying when they do stuff like this. So clearly they've either just, I don't even think maybe they've repainted, maybe they've just erased the color. So if you look, actually just look closely under there, that looks like a slight preservation there. Of what would have been a dark brown. I wonder if I got a closer image. I wish I had more time when I was there because I would have seen if I could have captured any of the original paint that they're trying to hide. Kind of feel like you got hints of it there as well. But either which way, this is a beautiful bust and it's still an African, so they can do what they want with it. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. Look at that. Look at those features. This is really lovely. You know what's really lovely about this one as well? Just look at the hair. So detailed. We really get a good idea of what that hairstyle was like with this. In fact, it's comparison time. Oh, oh. <laughs> we do like to do our comparisons. Let's have a quick comparison. Because it's good to see the hairstyle real time. So I think this might be. Oh, maybe I don't have it. Let's try this one. No, it's not that. Sorry, I just pulled one up and it's not that. Could be this. No, it's not that. That's too. This is annoying. Try this one. No, it's not that. Okay, well, this is closest I can get at the moment, but this is not spot on, by the way, because this is this one's too clean. But I think it's somewhere in the family of this this is Hamer tribe once again Ethiopia Ethiopia is so wonderful in terms of um, their preservation of visual comedic culture it's really get some really nice consistency in Ethiopia but um, this is the Hamer tribe and this is a similar ish although it's not spot on but because they use that kind of I think they use the animal fat and red ochre it kind of hides from it. I don't believe there would have been the use of that kind of like clay or um, animal fat in the hair when it came to the comedics. But you do get an idea in terms of the size of the the twists. So you get an idea of the size of the twist, but it's just not spot on. But it's close. It's quite close. really nice lovely lovely piece this is I actually didn't appreciate this as much as I'm appreciating it now when I was there I was in kind of like panic battery low mode <laughs> getting what I could so it's a fragment of statue of scribe royal menui name so a scribe called menui so look there's a scribe whose name we actually have <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna keep going on about this. Their annoying, their annoying um, elevation of random scribes. It really pees me off. <laughs> it's kind of like you guys. There are actual pharaohs. Yeah, you could put on your money. Hmm? There are pharaohs. You could. You know, what's wrong with Josa? Why do you put Josa on your money? Hmm. Wonder why. <laughs> you obviously know. I was very over the moon to see this beautiful statue of Queen T this is one of my favorites and I saw it live and I managed to get super high res I mean how much high res can you get look how close that is I managed to get amazing photos of this statue and it's really nice because this statue looks exactly like her bust other than the fact that she's younger here clearly than in her bust and the nose is slightly less tampered because someone did point out to me that the nose of the bust has been slightly tampered. So this one we get a preserved nose for Queen T. And you just get to see, yeah, just the same queen, the same wonderful features she's got here, but just a slightly younger version, which is really nice to see. So there's another view of it. You get to see the full crown there. 
So that's the uh, I, I, I could be wrong But I want to say That's the crown of Amun Ra A representation of Amun Ra Or Amun Amen Or Amin Ra Oh look I've, I just realised this I never realised this before This is um, Amun Hotep the Third's arm here I'm going to assume So um, there used to be A statue of Amun Hotep the Third here That's just being completely lost I never saw that before Look there's his shoulder Standing next to his queen That's so beautiful Because actually the story is that they I think they married When they were really really young So I think he was She was 12 but he was like just a teenager I think he was only like a couple years older than her So they were both incredibly young And they stayed obviously together for their Entire life and they were very close So this, is, uh, this picture is actually really nice Because this would have would have been a a young couple um, and he just got his arm there which is really nice it's a shame would love to have seen what this looked like originally I never noticed that arm before <laughs> sorry I had to keep pointing out it's, it's quite nice. so I got it from side view because I always try and capture that because it's nice to do the comparison And then another super super close up. So yeah, these these do come in handy. These really really close ups do come in handy. I can't remember which statue this was. I think I've got the front of it, but I did want to get the back of the Nemes once again, just to stress. Okay, just to stress once again that the Nemes was not a silly floppy piece of cloth that they just chucked on their heads like a dish, like a you know tea towel. Like they quickly, like I like to show, this was a very elaborate piece of headgear, reflecting the locked, likely locked or twisted hair of the pharaoh, and you can see how it coalesced back into the central plait on the back. Okay, and this is a a trend that has been kept up by the, I want to say Maasai. Is it the Maasai? I think it's the Maasai. Let me have a look and see if I can find an example. I've got a video on crowns. If you haven't watched that yet, quick plug. Do watch that. It's really eye-opening, I think. I think it's a really eye-opening video. Let me see if I can find... One second. I just want to show... Do a quick comparison between the back plat of the Maasai. Yeah, I think it's the Maasai people. One second, which is could be the Samburu. Ah, oh, you know what? I'll have the image. I know I have the image. I'll have the image saved in the folder. Bear with me. Sorry, I just want to show you this really quickly. It shouldn't take too long. So here we go. And by the way, just watch if you haven't watched the Crowns documentary, just watch it to do me a favor because that documentary took me ages. <laughs> and you'll just make my day if you just watch it, please. Okay, so here's not the best view of it and not the best example but for the sake of me running around in circles trying to find the perfect image which you will can find if you watch the documentary i'm just going to show you the one that i've got but just to give you an idea of what that is so there is this is an example of it okay so you can see the hair is twisted or locked okay once again very common african hairstyle and it coalesces at the back into this single tied together and that's exactly what you have here okay it's exactly the same thing but this is just would have been some kind of head cover that sat above it okay so yeah i just want to get a capture of that from the rear it's a beautiful um display of the capresh as well from the side Let's see who this is from the front i think this oh this is one we were looking at earlier i think and I don't want to capture the Nemas again from the back. So this is, by the way, consistent with all Nemas. This isn't a one-off. The Nemas always has exactly the same representation. There's no... The, the idea of this loose, floppy dishcloth is a myth. 
it does not exist anywhere in ancient Kemet. Every time there's a Nemus, it is this very elaborate crown that coalesce at the back in this single plait. As a result, and the lines in the Nemus are a depiction of the flow of the hair. Okay, just like the curls in the Capresh are a depiction of the shaping of the hair. Okay, all ancient Kemetic crowns related to the hair that lay beneath them. Okay, there's a reason for the patterning that was used on them. And then from the front view, obviously the um, Nemes would give you the give the wearer the appearance of being a cobra as well. Statue of Prince Yamis. Oh no, we've been here before, haven't we? Am I going back? Okay. So I never knew I took two, 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 that picture two times. This one here, does anyone recognize who this is? Quick clue, I've also done a reconstruction of this person, which I'm gonna put up side by side. I wanna see if anyone gets this. Who is this Pharaoh? By the way, this is them as a child, as you can clearly see, this is a very young version of them. But is anyone gonna get who this Pharaoh is? I will wait for you guys. I think I'm slightly ahead. It's not Nama. Good guess. It would be nice if we had some other images of Nama actually. And I can see where you're going. Kind of nose bridgy, kind of wide. I can kind of see that. Any other guesses? Who is this Pharaoh? Aminem hat, a little quick off the mark there, retain ascension. Very good. Aminem hat the third, to be precise. That was excellent. A few people said Amin Hotep. No, it is, it is Aminem hat the third. That's a uh, retain ascension is absolutely spot on. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you the young reconstruction. I did an older reconstruction, which I'll pull up, but then I'll also show you the young reconstruction side by side so you can kind of see how we land something close to that um, so older reconstruction is I'm trying to find is this it here yeah this is it here so this is the older reconstruction of Aminem Hat the third and then age adjusted downwards I think this is it This is the younger reconstruction. So, whoops. So bear in mind, the older reconstruction was based on a different statue. This is it age adjusted young downwards, younger. And would you say you can see the similarity there? Yeah, so this, bear in mind, I didn't create this reconstruction from this. I created this reconstruction by taking this reconstruction that I've created from a completely different statue, age adjusted it downwards using AI, and once again, would we say that the Kemetic people did a good job in that? <laughs> I think the AI did quite a good job. Is it just me or do these look quite close? Phenotypically? I think so. So once again, just kind of stressing the fact that um, the consistency, once again, is not, <laughs> you know, you can't accident your way to that kind of similarity, okay? I'm not saying they look exactly the same, but they look close enough. I mean, look at everything from the nose the way it kind of like swings in once again that's from the older reconstruction just a literal taking the lips have got the same shape the eyes same distance yeah this is <laughs> and that's just from age adjusting the older reconstruction and making it younger so there's a lot of coinkydink going on <laughs> yeah a lot of coincidence or like someone has just said, Wildflowers just said the artists were super talented and I'm going to lean towards the artists 
being super talented because it becomes really easy once I know I've done a good reconstruction of a of one of the kind of like a detailed piece of art it just seems to fit with everything so yeah there you go there's Eminem Hat the Third capture that one from the side as well just to get a real full look of them slightly closer I'm actually really happy that I got close up of this as well because the only image I had of this was really low resolution I couldn't find a good one on the net but look at that now I've got this super high resolution one that I own which is really nice to have I'm not gonna lie whose arm is this okay so this is this is where we're gonna go into a um RJ McKenzie asks how big is the Egyptian gallery my answer is absolutely massive it's really big it's really big um, I didn't finish it I gave up just to give you a heads up and I never even got to the African part um, I got too tired but yeah this is where we come to some we're going to come to quite a few tampered artworks here so this one I mean one of the nice things is that we have this arm fully preserving the original colour which is nice to see that's kind of rare even though it's been kind of blasted off in other places, okay? But then they've still done that annoying thing when they clearly repigmented the hair and around the eyes in an effort to swing people's perception on what this person looks like, which is really annoying. If the hair was faded and the eyes were faded, it would just look, you'd, your, your brain would be able to map quite easily what it was looking at. So when they repigment certain areas, it does really good job at kind of like, yeah, just doing weird stuff. But you can see even on the nose, there's been a preservation of the color, okay? So this is still, you know, it would be easy to restore this back to normal using some kind of coloring tool. I feel like it's something that I'm going to do. I'm gonna end up doing a few of these statue restorations back to their original color be nice it's a nice to do so I took a close up of this one ah so this is one with interestingly enough I think lapis lazuli eyes okay so those of you who see my documentary recently black and blue or at least very deep blue very much interchangeable in Kemet and that's with everything so this is not a depiction of blue eyes this is just a depiction of shiny black eyes because they wouldn't have seen any difference between the using blue or using black however one of the things that got me put in a question mark is my recent um interview with professor ampim said that the use of lapis, lapis lazuli was normally an indication that something was a fake so i did have a question mark here but i don't think this is a fake because i mean look at the pigment <laughs> throughout if it was fake they would have made it pink so i think this one's genuine um, nothing on this statue kind of offends me I think it if it was in its original colour I know what I'm looking at there and the only thing that's been done in terms of like in my view oh look here's another thing as well look it's got the high back and he mentioned about the high back not being a genuine thing so I don't know I don't know but I, I, I'm okay I, I was okay with this just based on the fact that it was dark brown and you know I'm not thrown off by feet. I mean look at it the lips are still quite full I'm not thrown off by features being slightly narrow or something like that because yeah like I said there's you know you're, you're gonna find Africans that look like this you know we're very you know <laughs> these kind of features and this is one one of the reasons why these statues get preserved is because they they keep the Africans that are closest to them <laughs> and try and make that kind of look be the norm. And the ones that look too African, like our statue of Amenhotep III that we saw, they'll lock that away in a vault or put it in some side some side window that no one ever sees, you know? But it doesn't make them any less African. And I was talking about this earlier as well. Sorry, I'm going off on a bit of a ramble, but I posted Ramesses' mummy, okay? Ramesses the second mummy. Um, I know there's a lot of controversy about where that mummy was found and where they pulled it out from. 
But here's the issue. <laughs> it's still an African. Because I think as much as they like to pull random mummies out and say that they were the royals and they may or may not be royals, my kind of gut feeling is that they don't have any Eurasian mummies. No one was mummifying Eurasians. It wasn't their practice. So regardless of where they find mummies, they're still going to be Africans. So whether or not you find a mummy that's kind of used to be, you know, you've swapped a mummy from one that maybe looked like a Great Lakes region, you know, jet black, central kind of like African, and you've swapped it out for a mummy that slightly looks more, you know, Beja or, you know, Ethiopian or Motic or something like that. You've swapped it out for something that has slightly more kind of like, I want to say quote unquote, features that some Eurasian people have. You're still dealing with an African. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel about the mummy of Ramesses. It's like, you're, you're st it's still an African. You're still stuck. You still, you tried to fuzzy the water and fool everybody, but it's still an African. So I'm still happy to tell everybody this is an African mummy regardless because you're not gonna you're gonna they're gonna really struggle to find non-Africans being mummified because it's it's an African <laughs> tradition and that's kind of how I feel like when they keep some of these random statues it's like well it was still an African <laughs> regardless <laughs> you know it might have been an African with features that you guys have but it was still an African so and if I have to do a reconstruction to show you that, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> but it's still an African. That's the point. This one once again, look, preserve this is this is still an African. It's got preserved paint there. Okay. You can see it. They've done their best to kind of like, yeah, like I said, blast off their fingers there, but this is still the face of an African, regardless. At least in my view. <laughs> this one here clearly clearly an African and this one I think I've, is this the seated scribe this looks like the same kind of brother as that seated scribe doesn't it it looks it's got the same something about them looks familiar looks similar this is this one's weird because I haven't yeah I haven't seen a this is kind of like that granny die alright but I've never seen one where the paint was preserved like this on the surface so this is almost the first to have this kind of material and then have paint preserved anywhere let alone in the eyes because normally the paint doesn't last on this granny die art material which is probably why this has given me slight alarm bells I think they've repainted the hair and repainted the eyes once again just to yeah, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird, but yeah. This is a, yeah, another, this is a interesting one. <laughs> not so skillfully made this one. <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about this one. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's move on. L administrator Kai. Kai the administrator. So these are 5th dynasty. So this is old kingdom stuff. 6th sixth, sixth, sixth dynasty. The major domi. Keki. And Sigma. The first. One say. Sigma son I suppose I'm going to stop trying to read French I can't do it <laughs> so this is what we're looking at some of these statues here these ones just look so literally just like re literally just like modern portraits of a farmer I'm not going to lie Really giving me a far vibes here. Beautiful, beautiful statue this is. So these are 
Statue of Man. So they're all called Statue of a Man. <laughs> so you're not going to get much detail of these ones. had to get a picture of a cometic headrest okay so this one is the well it belongs to Pepe the second basically it's Pepe the second sixth dynasty look at the cometic headrest still following the same construction to this day in Africa central Af well all of Africa every almost pretty much every single nation in Africa has some kind of ethnicity that practices still using these exact same standards of headdress. And just to be clear, those of you who haven't watched my crowns documentary that I keep plugging, the use of headdress was absolutely fundamental to preserve. I know there are other ritualistic reasons, but on a practical reason, it was to preserve the hairstyles because the crowns, as you women will know, you know, the development of these hairstyles was a very very long process particularly if you were royal so you had your hair in these elaborate crown styles you couldn't just sleep on a you know a pillow made of reed like the greeks did they had to use these headrests in order to preserve the hairstyle um, amongst other things so it's really nice to see that it was you know you only see the use of these kind of wooden headrests in cultures that practice ethno-trichology. So ethno-trichology is the practice of essentially communicating your position in society using your hairstyle. So where your, you know, your hairstyle carries, um, you know, code, hairstyle is codified in the practices of the region so people understand something about you from the hairstyle that you wear you only see the use of headrests in those kind of societies and this is why you see it widespread throughout africa why and it was also used in oceana amongst the papua new guineans and it's also used in far east china and japan where they also practice ethno trichology but a different kind but anywhere you see where there's a heavy emphasis on hairstyle codification in society you should see the use of these headrests but in in and around the eurasian african kind of um west asian region only africans practice this none of the other eurasians and europeans and whatever practiced ethno trichology and thus did not have these african headrests And they really are widespread. You can Google that if you want. You'll just find them literally everywhere in Africa. I've got a short on headrests. Please do watch it. Actually, that's my most viewed short. It's got like nearly 7 million views, I think. So, yeah, give that one a watch if you get some time. I had to take these images. I know these women are very skinny, so it's probably not depicting something positive here, especially since they kind of show these bandages around their chest. I just thought it was a very interesting, perhaps showing some kind of a drought or famine season. Let's have a look here. What does it say here? Oh, so Bedouins in the desert of Egypt. So this is really interesting. Fifth Dynasty. They said it's a depiction of Bedouins. That I mean, that's an, that'd be interesting. I want to know how they referenced that. These were Bedouins, but yeah, interesting nonetheless. Statuette of something Garçon. This should just say statuette of a very African man. <laughs> oh man. Is that what it says? Bedrooms dying of starvation in the desert. Wow. That's a strong translation. Thank you very much for that um censored. So this is, hmm, do I recognize that face? I want to say this might be Mentu Hotep the second, no. 
It looks a bit similar from profile view to mental health at the second. Could be. I could be wrong. Let's see. Do I have a plaque? Oh, I didn't take a picture of the plaque. Not quite. Maybe, maybe somewhat. But I think definitely it's giving me 12th Dynasty vibes. Whatever it is. If I got, did I get a plaque? I didn't. That's a shame. No, this one was. Uh... Oh. This one looks like it was jet black all over at some stage. This one looks weird to me, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm trying to figure out what it what's going on here. It's got slightly unfinished things there. It's just been so rubbed down, you don't really know what's going on anymore. So this one, at least has been allowed to fade a bit more gracefully. You can once again see the preservation of the deep brown pigment in places really strong zygomatic structure there really strong cheekbones this is a really interesting piece a wooden stele showing the short twists again and these ones these ones really pissed me off I'm not gonna lie to you I can't I can't stress enough how much I, I, I looked at these ones and I, I was trying to play I was trying to say mm, no maybe they're just I don't know I got really weird vibes from these three I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie there's something about it the hair just looked too big I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Someone's gonna turn around to me and say these are, these are fine, but these three I don't know. Just give me really weird vibes all around. So I don't know if there's been excessive tampering or something. But these ones, yeah, these ones didn't hit me right. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, even this. I mean, in fairness, look. If I was to look at this woman and ignore the weird green thing underneath there, I think this could easily you know i've i've met several kind of well i'm not going to say several i've said, met a few habesha women who kind of have this facial structure so it's not out of the realms of africanity but then there's other things that just kind of like hit me weirdly i think like for instance even the proportions the the, the body proportions i mean the shoulders look african very broad okay that's fine that's a very african trait but then torso looked a bit I don't I don't know I don't know clearly the hair's been recolored okay that's without a doubt the hair has certainly been recolored and restored to black but I don't know the, the the whole of these statues I don't I don't know how I felt about them I don't want to write them off because there's some elements of them that look comedic but I don't know I don't know how do you guys feel about these ones I can't give a I can't give a definitive about the way I feel about them. I just had to capture them. And bear in mind these were given lots of prominence, these three. You know, bear in mind everything that I've shown you, all the pharaohs and stuff that we've gone through, but these three were probably the most front and centre. I mean you can see can you see the space that they've carved around these three? It's kind of like, look at these statues from the old it's like, why are these ones so important? You know who even are these people <laughs> once again but yeah try to cut it from sideways as well i mean even look at the hair that's very african that's like these look like almost perfect sister locks to be totally honest with you almost perfect sister. this is what i mean i'm not sure what to do with this one because if they wanted to be you know they they make a lot of fakes and if they wanted this isn't like 
these fakes aren't giving me Rahotep and Nofret vibes where they create the fake and then they just go whole hog and make a fake hairstyle like they did with, like with Nofret and a fake crown and this one I mean why would they make the fake and then preserve the very very super African hairstyle I mean that's even that detail just looks quite good it looks like I don't know it looks like sister locks and then I don't know I don't know. I can't. I can't just scream fake because I don't like the artifact. I have to get something. They. Ha I have to be given some kind of a smoking gun. You know. <laughs> I'm not sure. You think they said maybe they're just getting better with fakes? It's true. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This one. Yeah, these ones threw me through a bit of a loop. I mean, like I said, like, these could all. These could all be Africans. Okay, with the right color. Okay, and perhaps with. Yeah, these could all be Africans with the right colour, but I don't know. It's something about these three just kind of made me go, mm. yeah. <laughs> That's that taste in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So there's close ups. Really had to share this with you guys. Wrong period. These are supposed to be old kingdom. So someone said late period, maybe. I said, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's a possibility, but these are supposed to be old kingdom. That's the, the the slightly shocking thing, and then the hands, and then look, the detail all falls apart here. This is where it's kind of like this is, you know, yeah. This is this is where we're getting sloppy. We're looking at a little finger that's longer than your index finger. So, you know, this person is either a really bad artist, or this was a depiction of Europeans. Cause, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm gonna get shut down. Let me stop. Um, I got this image of a scarab. I think this is a scarab. Why is it blurry? No, it's not. It's just a plaque. It kind of has those. I was going to say similar to normal palette, but this is just giraffes. This is nothing. These aren't the cephropods. These are just literally giraffes. So this is literally just African animals on display here. Really nice piece. What does it say here? Palette en cadre. The quadruple. Okay, so something palette of I don't know four hyenas and lycons. Is that lions? Someone said, "No way, those are old kingdom." Yeah, that's that's that that's that was my gut feeling, you know. Um, yeah, just had to capture them for you. Even the poses just looked weird, didn't they? I don't know. Don't know, don't know. Okay, so we're out of ancient. Well, we're out of Kemet for now. I think again, back into Europe. I think I managed to capture a few more pieces. How about this brother? <laughs> Come on, that is it. Just me, or is that definitely a brother over here? Ah, oh, Lycon Lycaons means wolf. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, so I had to capture this brother. So this is. I'm trying to read it. Where did the name start? Not sure. <laughs> Sensor, do you really saying that that is not a brother? You saying that that's not a brother? Wow, okay, fair enough. Maybe I'm maybe I'm on one. Maybe I'm on some BS. That's what I thought. I thought that's definitely a brother. <laughs> that is definitely a brother. But anyway, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I yeah, I've been told I see what I want to see, so there you go. I don't know, I saw a brother there. This is, I know this is Frederick of Saxony. 
and I know there's definitely black portraits of him. So you get coins of him where he looks white, you get ones of him where he looks black, ones where he looks miscellaneous. But Frederick of Saxony has definitely got a big, massive question mark above his head. Um, I think there's enough evidence to suggest he's a whitewashed black man, definitely. This one, I'm not making any massive claims about this one. I just thought it was interesting. I like to capture the ones that kind of capture my interest and then see what pops up about them. If anything comes in the future, I can always reference back and go, okay, okay, well, that's why that image caught my attention. So I'm not making any claims about the appearance of this person. I just thought there's something there that I wanted to capture and then maybe reference in the future or discard you know not gonna say for sure but it, it triggered it triggered my <laughs> spidey senses this obviously is an African here or a black person here what does it say here d'après un modèle de Giambologna yeah, someone needs to read that because I have no idea what that means. Capture it from a few angles. And this sister as well. Very African proportions as well. So it says, Depre un modèle attribué à Grégo. I wonder if anyone can translate that for me as well. This is a, looks like a pygmy boy. By the proportions. Oh, there's another image of that woman, the model. Gian Bologna. What's Gian? Someone tell me where Gian Bologna is. Capture this little image once again. Just tweaked my spidey senses. This is definitely an depiction of a black person and we're trying to think of what animal they're riding the back of their lion it says so on that basis can we assume that this is an actually an African chandelier personnage chevron ou lion how do, what do you think of my French accent by the way <laughs> oh that's it We've reached the end. Yay! Because it's late. It's 11.30 over here. <laughs> we did well. <laughs> That's the end. That is the end. That is the end. We have reached the end of this podcast. That's all of the images that I had to show you from the Louvre. And yeah, that was fun. That was a two-parter added together. That's like five hours worth of uh, image referencing we did there. So not bad. Thank you guys for joining me. It has been an immense amount of fun. Um, and I look forward to doing another one very soon. Like I said, I've got those two museums that I want to visit. And when I do, I'll come back with some stuff. Thank you guys for the uh, positive feedback. I don't always know how these streams going to go because we are literally freestyling it. But I think we've had a really good time. So thank you. Um, yeah, watch back from the beginning thank you for hitting up the likes guys and being the usual fantastic crowd you all are um shout out to all of you who've been on here commenting and keeping it alive thank you and shout out to my moderation team which has grown with each live stream <laughs> brilliant um and thank you for those of you who tune in all the time even those of you who don't maybe get involved with the chat so I might not know you by name, but I know there's probably loads of you who just sit silently and, you know, 
show your support that way i appreciate all of you yeah and have a fantastic evening and have a great monday and i'll see you all very soon oh just a quick heads up actually so content wise so you know what's going on literally um, i hope you've all watched part one of my kemet um breakdown i'm doing a bit of a breakdown of the word kemet now the reason i actually ended up breaking it into two parts is because the second part which i'm working at the moment was just taking forever and i wanted to release something so i released the first part which has been done now for at least a couple of weeks for the second part because there's so many different levels and things in terms of how to try you know the actual meaning of the word kemet because all we did in the first part really was talk about the kind of syntax the structure how you know you build the word up and understand you know the committed um language the well, the medineta the language structure and how that worked but the second part is much more difficult because we're going to look at a lot of the different translations and applications of the word so it's just taken me a really long time but i'll try and get that out god willing by the end of the week um in the meantime at the this time next week no i think it's 28th we got it so is it monday or oh, no sunday night yeah this time next week i'll be interviewing professor ampin again so those of you who enjoyed part one will be part two to that we'll be doing that a week today as well so you've got that to look forward to and i'll try and get some more content out in the meantime as well but yes i'm now yawning every other word so i'm gonna go get some sleep thank you everyone have a fantastic evening and i really appreciate it. everyone i'll thank you for all the donations as well um your generosity is very much appreciated um those of you who drop donations um thank you again bye